Look, it's not often that a book shocks me, but the algorithm, how AI can hijack your career and steal your future, is certainly one of those. It describes how organizations are making often arbitrary hiring decisions based on AI, and with 99% of Fortune 500 companies using this technology, it's something we all need to be aware of. In this video, I describe exactly how organizations are using this technology, why, and how you can get ahead in the AI-based hiring age. There are four main ways organizations are using AI in recruiting. To assess candidates' answers to one-way pre-recorded interviews, to conduct deep background checks of candidates' online lives, to assess game-based recruitment tests and screening tools. Let's start with one-way pre-recorded interviews. With over 100 million of these conducted to date, these are certainly not niche. And the thing is, I always assumed human recruiters would be watching these and scoring them, maybe from the comfort of their own homes. But I was wrong. It's actually AI measuring a few different things. Your tone of voice, facial expressions, eye movements and words. Eye movements are being used to determine a candidate's thinking style, facial expressions for emotional stability, tone for how convincing a candidate sounds, and words, well, with one test run by the writer Shellman showing it didn't make much difference if you were speaking German or Chinese or an English-speaking role. AI then uses all of the data points it gathers to assign each candidate a rank. Novice, developing, intermediate, advanced, and expert. Alarm bells really should be ringing. Shellman goes on to quote the psychology professor Lisa Feldman Barrett. AI-based facial movement technologies are stuck in the old theory of universal emotions. It's outdated. People can cry in anger, they can smile in anger. The tools confuse measurement with the interpretation of the measurement. And that's got to be fair enough, right? The second form of AI use in recruitment comes in the form of assessing game-based performance. With the promise of testing candidates' underlying skills, Shellman found AI interpreting the speed at which a candidate taps the spacebar as indicating creativity. I kid you not. CV screeners, meanwhile, tend to use unsupervised machine learning models that can't account for their decisions with up to a half such tools, straight up excluding candidates with anything more than a six month gap in their employment. But I saved the freakiest till last because it's AI checking on the deep online behavior of candidates that shocked me the most. You know that post you might have liked 10 years ago of your friend making mulled wine for their Christmas party? Well, it's getting tagged by AI as alcohol-related content, affecting your employability score. And with over 90% of business leaders surveyed, they found their AI hiring tools were rejecting perfectly qualified candidates. Which begs the question, why use AI recruiting tools at all? It comes as no surprise, it saves time and it saves money. And both of those things are, of course, business decisions. Me, I'm personally of the opinion that it's definitely worth investing in the humanity of the recruitment process to really get the very best talent out there. Shellman agrees. Hiring top talent might be the most important task many companies can do for their bottom line. I honestly think it's worth every single penny. And I think many of us might intuitively feel this, but it's impossible to directly measure. And as we know, what gets measured gets optimized. At a conference for HR professionals, Shellman described one product vendor saying it saved its clients up to 65% on their hiring costs. For me, the use of AI in recruiting matters for six really simple but important reasons. First, people's life opportunities are tied to their careers and ability to earn. We need recruitment to be fair for society to be fair. Second, there's little evidence the tools work as intended. Third, the use of AI often embeds existing prejudices in society. Fourth, the lack of transparency. If we're rejected for credit, we can look into why that was. With AI in recruitment, that's just not possible. Fifth, the use of AI assumes that we're static and unchanging, the very same as the day we took that test by AI. And sixth, if we want a workforce for the future, is assessing current candidates based on past performance, which is what AI does, really the best way to do that? I'd love to know what you think in the comments section down below. Shellman devotes a whole section of her book for insider tips for how to get ahead in the age of AI-based recruitment, and you should definitely buy it for the full scoop. For me, for now, here are my top three takeaways. One, 
Avoid large job boards if you can. I always kind of intuitively felt like this might be the case, but it's great to get Shellman's inside view from recruiters who reveal to her that they look at candidates first who have applied directly to their website, and only if they can't find the talent there will they then look at other sources for candidates. Second, Shellman recommends contacting recruiters directly on LinkedIn after applying for a job. Me personally, I'd say you probably want to do this before you apply as well to humanize your candidacy. And third, one I found a little bit depressing, to be honest with you, Shellman recommends not including more than 85% of the skills mentioned in the job description in your CV in case AI interprets that as you having just copy pasted the entire job description into your CV. Hilka, thank you so much for an incredibly important book that I hope really resonates hard in the corridors of power. As for you, dear viewers, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being you. I'll catch you next time.